Hello, my dear students! It's a brand new day for us to learn. This is Miss Julie Maro Puno, your teacher broadcaster in Arts A. I want you to enjoy and have fun while learning and discover a glaring beauty of arts. Are you ready? Our topic for today is based from the most essential learning competency from the Department of Education for Grade 8. Analyze elements and principles of arts in the production of arts and crafts inspired by the cultures of Southeast Asia. After going through this module, you are expected to 1. Identify the elements and principles of arts and crafts used the production of design in Southeast Asia. 2. Draw arts and crafts of Southeast Asia. 3. Relate their art forms in the way of life of some countries of Southeast Asia. Let us begin! Let me help you discuss about the elements and principles of arts and craft in Southeast Asia. In your grade 7, you have learned the elements and principles of arts. So let's explore more the world of art. Arts is a way of expressing the author's imaginative and conceptual ideas intended to be appreciated for their beauty. Its elements are color, form, line, shape, space, texture, and value. However, the principles of arts are the rhythm, harmony, balance, contrast, movement, pattern, proportion, and variety. In this module, you will now explore more how these elements and principles will be used to achieve fluency in the artworks as we specifically study some of the Southeast Asian arts and crafts. Are you excited? Great! Southeast Asia pertains to the huge peninsula of Indochina and the extensive archipelago that is sometimes called as East Indies. Southeast Asian arts are predominantly influenced by religious belief and are often expressed natural scenes and themes from their aesthetic tradition. Don't you know that our daily routine in our lives is a form of art? Whatever we do every day, that is the nature of arts. So let's find out and learn some cultures of Southeast Asian countries. Let's begin from the history of the country of Indonesia. Indonesian Arts and Craft Experience a long history with each period lives distinctive arts from prehistoric cave paintings to contemporary arts of modern Indonesian artists. The traditional colors for central Javanese batik were made from natural ingredients and consisted primarily of beige, blue, brown, and black. The oldest color that was used in traditional batik making was blue. The color was made from the leaves of the indigo plant. The leaves were mixed with molasses, sugar, and lime and left to stand overnight. Batik pattern in Java can be divided into three main elements. One, kluwongan or the main decorative motif. Two, isen-isen. Three, decorative motif as filler. Now, let me ask you, do you think the Indonesian arts is beautiful and exciting? You are right. Let's continue with a draft action refers to the process of dyeing the fabric by making use of a resist technique, covering areas of cloth with a dye-resistant substance to prevent them from absorbing colors. Indonesian batiks has many colors and patterns. Natural materials such as cotton or silk are used for the cloth so that it can absorb the wax that is applied in the dye-resisting process. The fabrics must be of high thread count, densely woven, 
It is important that cloth of high quality have this high thread count so that the intricate design qualities of batik can be maintained. All right, you've got it. At this time, I will let you observe the picture. What do you observe or notice about the picture given? Do you know that in Southeast Asia, Indonesia is one of the most unique and beautiful country? Great job! Now, the shadow puppetry is known in Indonesia called Wayang Kulit. It is a traditional form of shadow play and perform in Indo-Malayan archipelago. There are seven types of puppets. One, putri or women. Two, danawa or monster. Three, dagelan or clowns. Four, halus or refined characters. Five, gaga or warrior type characters. 6. Wanara or monkeys and 7. Gusen or characters with modest manners. At times, Wayang Kulit will also feature Lijipans or refined characters with modest manners and Lanjapans or refined characters with a capacity for violence. The following are the elements of Wayang Kulit performance. 1. Puppeteer or Dalang One who entertains and teaches, usually men. 2. Gamelan A traditional Indonesian orchestra Its job is to accompany the puppeteer's story with engaging music. 3. Shadow Puppets Wayang Kulit Traditionally made out of cowhide Wayang Kulit is among the best known offering a unique combination of ritual, lesson, and entertainment. Now, we will move on discussing about the Malaysian arts and crafts. Are you excited to explore the Malaysian arts? Malaysian batik can be found in the east coast of Malaysia such as Kilantan, Terangano, and Pahang. Since there are a large number of Japanese Immigrants in Malaysia, especially on southern part, Batik in Johor clearly shows Javanese influences. The most common motifs of Malaysian Batik are leaves and flowers. Designs that show animals are rare because Islam norms forbid animal images as decoration, except the butterfly theme. Let me show you this picture. How do you describe Malaysian batik design? The visual identity of Malaysian sculpture is based on the physical form and space. Malaysian sculptures are mostly relief. Relief sculpture is done with stone, marble, bronze, and many other substances. It is divided into three types. One, alto form. This is similar to the Egyptians' altar relief sculptures of gods or pharaohs attached to their temples. 2. Bas form. This is common as wall decorations in Greek or Roman buildings, and these are mostly seen on the Colosseum. 3. Sunken relief sculpture. An image that is carved into the surface rather than out of it. The best Malay wood carving is from Terangano and Kelantan, where the craft is divided into two. One, Ukiran Halus, or the fine carving, involves the carving of relief patterns, hilts of keris or short Malay dagger, bed heads, and cupboard tops. Two, Ukiran Kasar. Or rough carving refers to the carvings on larger objects like furniture. Look at this picture. How are you going to compare the two pictures in terms of their designs? 
Job well done, students! At this moment, fasten your seatbelt because we will now depart to Thailand. Thailand Arts and Crafts Did you know that Thai silk is produced from the cocoons of Thai silkworms? Weavers raise the caterpillars on a steady diet of mulberry leaves. Presently, Thai silk making is considered to be one of the finest arts in the world. Thai art is basically composed of Buddhist art and scenes from the Indian epics and was influenced by indigenous civilizations of the Mon and Khmer. In Thailand, sky lanterns are traditionally made from oiled rice paper on a bamboo frame. The general design is a thin paper shell about 30 cm to a couple of meters across with an opening at the bottom. The opening is about 10 to 30 cm wide and is surrounded by a stiff collar that used to suspend the flame source. The source of hot air may be a small candle or fuel cell composed of a waxy flammable material. The Thai name is Homloi. During the year for festivals, flying lanterns are commonly used in Thailand. The most popular one is the Loi Krathong Festival, which is held on the night of the 12th full moon, usually in November of each year. What do you think about the Sky Lantern Festival? Amazing, right? Those are the things you need to know about Thailand. Half off! We are now in the Cambodian arts and crafts. Silk weaving in Cambodia dates to as early as the late 13th century, where women only weave cotton from kapok, a tropical tree, since none of the locals produces silk. Cambodian weaving has two main types. One, Ika technique. Quite complex, it produces pattern fabric which is diverse and vary by region. Two, an even twill. It yields single or two colors fabrics which are produced by weaving three threads so that the color of one thread dominates on one side of the fabric, while the two others determine the color on the reverse side. Cotton textiles also became part of Cambodian culture. Cambodian farmers weave baskets made of thinly cut bamboo as a source of income. Cambodia's kite making is now popular throughout the country. Let us move to Myanmar arts and crafts. Myanmar has 10 famous traditional arts and crafts, which is called Pansel Myo or 10 flowers. 1. Panchi. The art of painting that shows live animals in animate objects with the use of different colors. 2. Punpo. The art of sculpture which produce figures and floral motifs made of wood tree. 3. Panbe. Being tempered in the iron in the oven to make the desired elements, it is a kind of blacksmith. 4. Tanyon A vehicle that produces materials. It may either be a bamboo, wood, or thick black paint. 5. Tanput Making wooden utensils turning on the lat turner. 6. Panyan it constructs building with brick, stone, and concrete. 7. Pantot A craft of making decorative designs, floral stocco embus. 8. Pantamot The art of stone carving. 9. Patain Making objects of gold or silver. 10. Pante Manufacturer of materials of copper, bronze, or brass. The craftsmen are gong and the brass bowl 
Brass Triangle Monaco, and Small Bells Brass Gong. Our next stop is the Vietnam Arts and Crafts. There are different types in silk that are popular in Vietnam. One, Shantung Tafeta, a type of silk plain weave fabric, slightly thinner and less regular. Two, Bengalian Weave, a woven silk and a cotton material. It offered the impression of genuine silk but was made with lesser amounts of silk than cotton. Three, Ebony Satin, a natural lustrous silk hand-woven in southern Vietnam. Silk painting is one of the most popular forms of Vietnamese art. Are you ready to fly to the next country? Here we go! Lao Arts and Crafts According to Lao tradition, their history was not passed on orally. It was woven. Their stories were better shown and reflected in most intricate dance patterns and motifs of textiles. Creativity and cultural expression, which originally came from Laos, are what make the Lao art. Sheen is the Lao women's ankle long skirt that has undeniable form and unique patterns. Lao artisans use precious metal-like bronze, silk, gold, the media in their sculptural creations. Can you guess our next destination? Great job! We are now boarding to Brunei. Brunei Arts and Crafts Brunei's traditional textile, also called batik, is distinctly different than that of Indonesia, Malaysia, and Singapore. Batik can be done in different ways. Hand-drawn, using metal blocks, screen printing, and digital printing. The three categories of men's headgears in Brunei Darussalam. 1. The Star A piece of cloth tied around the head. It is a symbol of honor and self-respect. 2. Songkok or Kopia A type of cup made from velvet. It is a shape of truncated cone. 3. Tangkolok or Surban Like a turban and is a typical headdress in the Middle East, it is made from long songket cloth folded and tied in particular style. Our last stop is Singapore. Let's explore the Singaporean arts and crafts. Batik is featured in as the uniform of flight attendants for the official flag carrier airlines of Singapore, Indonesia, and Malaysia. The Merlion as a mythical creature and as a symbolic nature to Singapore was widely used to represent both the country and its people. Let us remember the elements and principles of Southeast Asian arts and crafts were shown in the styles, structures, and designs among various artworks. They have their own unique styles and themes because of its inspiration based on their own culture. Did you enjoy our trip to the different countries in Southeast Asia? Yes! Indeed, it was a fun learning and explore the world of arts of Southeast Asian countries. For the reminders, please answer all the activities in your Art 8 module before the deadline. If you have question and clarification, Contact your subject teacher directly through messenger, emails, and phone number. Thank you for tuning in. What a wonderful learning for today's live. Keep updated for our next lesson. Until then, this is Julie Opuno, your teacher broadcaster today. Leaving you with a saying, those who are able to see beyond the shadows and lies of their culture will never be understand. 
Let alone believe by the masses by Plato. Goodbye and God bless.